Hospital Radio Haven. Keeping you company just when you need a friend. Ha, ah, Steve Harley and Sarah Brightman and the Phantom of the Opera taken from the album The Premier Collection, which is a compilation album of some of Andrew Lloyd Webber's finest work. The album was moving from 21 to number 14 on the album charts in November 1988 and it features such great tracks from musicals like Phantom of the Opera, Starlight Express, Evita, Jesus Christ Superstar and my favourite, Cats, which is where we're going to go for our next track because we've got Memory by Elaine Page coming up before too long. But before we play that, we go to the phone to speak to one of the current cast members of Cats, actress Marianne Benedict. Marianne, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. How are things with you? Not bad at all. I'm just enjoying a week off from the show, which is lovely. So spending time with my actual real-life cat. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a cat person in real life? Yeah, absolutely. I've always been cat mad. I've had cats growing up. And then I've got a, uh, a boy and a girl cat, so I've got Jack and Bridget, and I absolutely adore them. They're my babies, yeah. I am crazy cat lady. So do you take um, acting lessons from the cats? Do you actually uh, follow them around and... <laughs> See you other know, it's funny because there are a couple of things that, because um, I joined the tour halfway through the year, and so I was kind of thrown in quite quickly, and all the rest of the cats in the cast had, had been um, moving and acting and dancing together for a long time, and sometimes I watch things that they do on stage, mm-hmm. and I think, oh, that's funny, that's funny, but then when I come home and watch my own cats, I see where they've got the inspiration, oh, like little things that they do with their mouths, and little twitches and habits that they have, so um, yeah, I the, the cast do do a lot of cat watching before they um, before they open in the show, which is quite funny. So they're method actors in a way, aren't they? They really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, everyone the creative team take the show very seriously, and it's one of those things. But if you don't, then it, it then it's laughable. You know, you've got twenty odd adults, fully grown adults, dressed in cat suits, running around pretending to be cats. It sounds absolutely crazy. So you have to you have to commit to it a hundred percent for it not to be farcical. What I mean. Yeah, well, I saw it in Sunderland about uh, a few months ago now, and um, they came across as being absolutely believable. Um, I saw the show, and it, it totally blew me away. I mean, I hadn't seen it before. I knew about Cats since 1981 when it first came out, yeah. but that was the first time I'd seen it. And it's the best uh, musical I've ever seen, so there you go. Oh, that's lovely of you to say. It's, it's a rather good cast at the moment as well. Um, that each character is very... Uh, each, sorry, each dancer and actor is very suited to the roles that they play. Um, so it's a really great... I mean, we've only got a couple of weeks left of this tour now, unfortunately, but, um, it's yeah, you saw a really strong, committed cast, and they really dedicate their whole lives to the show because they're too exhausted to do anything else. I mean, you saw them, they don't stop for two and a half hours. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, there's not, not a lot of uh, social life or anything going on because everyone's too exhausted from committing to the piece. But yeah. it's worth it. It is non-stop and it's full on, as you say. Um, it's, br- mm. it's a brilliant show. So you play Grisabella in Cats. I do, yes. Which is the character which was originally played by Elaine Page when Cats first opened in 1981. Um, yeah. Big, big shoes to fill. Although she's about half my height. <laughs> yeah, I was going to mention that because when you walked onto the stage, I thought, my God, that is the biggest kitty I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> So I am um, a tallest Grisabella on record. But um, the way I um, approach the character is um, that I see that she was in her... I, I think of her as, in her heyday, she would have been maybe a model or a, you know, a burlesque dancer or something something terribly gorgeous and glamorous. Mm-hmm. And um, it went down the wrong path. Um, if, you know, if you're going to put it in human terms, imagine sort of, you know, drugs and alcohol and whatnot. And um, so she's... You can you look at her and you think, gosh, there used to be a you know a stunning woman there, a stunning cat, and but she's completely let herself go and fallen by the wayside, and now in cat terms, she's sort of covered in fleas and her fur's all matted together, and she's you know she's the kind of grubby cat sloping around outside without a home. But you can imagine when she was a kitten, she would have been you know the most beautiful one of the bunch. So um, that's how I kind of approach it with um, height wise because we we go now more for the character that she was in the past that she's gone down rather than specifically age because people will say oh you know you're not old enough but you know there's no rule book to say how old she should be people can kind of people can lose their way in life at any age so um that's that's kind of how we go how we tackle that one with the age and the height 
The song uh, Memory itself, it, it, it is a sort of a song of regret, but it's also a song of um, living the high life as well and now regretting it. as you, Because uh, Grizabella, she's trying to return to the actual tribe and she's been rejected, isn't she? Yes, yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's a terribly sad song. Um, it's her last ditch attempt to say to this group of people who, imagine they're, they're the closest thing that she ever had to family. Some of them maybe even are family. And she's begging them to forgive her for the mistakes that she made, for, you know, going off with the bad boy in a cavity or whatever it is that she did. And, and just saying, in the simplest terms, touch me. I mean, that's the most sort of iconic moment of the song. Because um, they won't go near her. They won't... They won't approach her. They won't let their, they get their, all their little kittens, the kids. They drag them away from her. You know, she's bad. She's bad news. And she smells and she's unpleasant. And um, she's a bad influence. And she's saying, look, I know that I've made mistakes. I know I messed up. And now all I'm asking is for forgiveness. Just accept me back into the group. I will try harder. I've seen the error of my ways. So it's a desperate plea, really. And... Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's heartbreaking because I think lots of people have been there, you know. And, and the other thing she's saying is she wants to be touched just simply that notion of someone holding your hand or giving you a cuddle, which, is, which can mean so much. And she hasn't had that for years. No one has touched her or, or gone near her for years. And she just, she just wants a hug. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's an incredibly powerful moment, really, of her reflecting over her past life and then um, approaching the moment that she's in, addressing that moment. Uh, Memory is such an an iconic song as well. In fact, many people will probably think of it as being the theme from Cats. Does that put, um, as a performer like yourself, does that put a lot of... Push the tongue in. Does it put (laughs) a lot of responsibility on your shoulders? Because you are actually... You're you're on the stage there and the spotlight is on you and um, you get to sing the song on your own, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, I was um, chatting to my husband just last night and saying... um, this is one of the most high-pressure shows and roles I've, I've ever done, I've ever played, um, because that pressure, is I feel it every single night, because it is a lot of people's favourite song. If not their favourite song in Cats, some people's favourite song, full stop, you know? Mm-hmm. So you're, you have a responsibility to deliver that song, and also you have a responsibility to kind of tie up the loose ends of the story as well. So you, you have to... You have to make people believe you and feel for you and go on a journey with you, but it also has to sound how it should sound. So there, there's a real, and there's so many wonderful singers have sung it. I mean, you know, Elaine Page got the ball rolling, and then also, um, you know, Celine Dion's done a version, the whole shirt thing, a Beverly Knight, you know, more recently. Um, so do have a responsibility to, to tell that story, to make the cats forgive you, and and also to give the audience what, you know, what they've came for, what they've come for. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, Grizabella's story is what carries the, the whole um, musical. It's the backbone of the musical, isn't it? Apart from mm. the little tale of McCavity, who was the bad boy of the, um, of the story. But, uh, well, could you tell us basically what the story of Cats is about? Sure. Well, it's quite... I always, I always try and give uh, friends and family the lowdown before they come to the show. Otherwise, some people are desperately searching for an intricate story and it and it's not there and so then they get confused but it's because it's actually quite simple it's a group of cats called the jellical cats and they meet up once a year and have a big party the jellical ball um, which happens at the end of act one and then one of them is chosen by old deuteronomy who's like the big old father cat the kind of uh, um the wisest and oldest cat, he picks one cat to be reborn, so to go to the heavy side layer, and it's that whole cats have nine lives thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so throughout the evening, throughout the show, each cat is almost auditioning for him to be able to go to the heavy side layer. So Mistopheles is, you know, pick me because I'm wonderful and magical, and um, Jenny Any Dots is pick me because I keep all the mice in line, and I... And, Everyone has a rich gimbal shank. I, you know, I keep the railways going, so I should be picked to go. But it's almost like a little display of each cat's role in the group and each cat's personality. And at the end of the, the night, this night that they meet, the Jellicle Night, um, one cat is chosen. And uh, we don't know at the beginning of the show which cat that might be. But no one thinks it's going to be Isabella because she's not even in the tribe anymore. You know, mm-hmm. she's, she's gone. She's old news. She's, made, she's a 
bad girl now. Um, so that's that's really the story. Is that it's about forgiveness and and acceptance, really, which is quite relevant. Even you know, it was relevant in 1981, but it's relevant today as well. So. That's the kind of deepest way of looking at it. Of course, when you get chosen, um, you're actually lifted bodily into the rafters of the (laughs) theatre. It's quite spectacular the way it is done. Um, But I remember Elaine Page, she just simply had to climb a staircase, but you were actually lifted on, on, it must be a hoist of some kind. So how do you... I actually wear a harness um, throughout the whole of memory. So, um, yeah, it's sort of stealthily hidden underneath my big fur coat. Um, yeah, they changed that when they re, uh, revamped the show um, for the Palladium two years ago now. And, uh, and yeah, they, they added that, that into it, which I think really works because it does give that sense of her, you know, going up to heaven or whatever you will. And um, the, the old set, it's not, you know, fab as it was, some people used to call it the spaceship or the rocket <laughs> and didn't quite understand what was going on. So, um, no, I think it's a much clearer message as to the outcome of the story. So you must have a good head for heights, though, because they do hoist you up a fair old height. Yes, but I, um, I played the Wicked Witch um, in uh, another production of uh, The Wizard of Oz at the London Palladium. And so for a whole year, I was flying in from the dome of the London Palladium. So... Um, and that got that really got me used to height. So this is kind of this is nothing compared to that, really. <laughs> well, I suppose not. But uh, how did you feel when you first found out that you had to be hoisted up like that? Um, like I said, because I've done it, I've flown in a couple of pantos and I did all that flight work uh, for the Wizard of Oz. I wasn't. Fa- it was probably the part of the track that phased me least. So I was like, yeah, yeah, fine, done that before, that's fine. I was more concerned about the you know the physicality and the songs and the story and. Um, and the makeup and everything. So, um, no, flying was the least of my concerns because of my because of my history. Yeah, the, the costumes and the makeup are absolutely spectacular. Um, mm. It must take you a long time to put the makeup on, especially. Yeah, it did when I first started. It used to take me an hour and a half, but um, now I've got it down. If I did it non-stop, quickly, um, so not perfectly, but quite quickly, it would, uh, it's about forty forty-five minutes. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so it's quite a commitment. You have to come in. You have to make sure that half of it's done before warm up. So, okay, you have time. Well, um, back to memory. We're going to play the Elaine Page version in a few moments, but uh, I do believe that you recorded a live version of it recently for a radio show. I did. Um, I went to uh, BBC Three Counties Radio, um, and we did a lovely interview there and they had arranged, they set up the piano and a new sound system and everything and the guy and the DJ Nick Coffer is very passionate about musicals and so he asked whether it's something that we could put together and we just thought, yeah, why not? And um, and he put together a lovely video of it which is on YouTube and they sent me a recording so it's a really special memory to have um, but I was so nervous, so, so nervous <laughs> singing live on the radio to 70,000 people was um, pretty nerve-wracking. Was that different to actually standing in front of people in a in a theatre? Then I mean, yeah, yeah completely different. Because when you're in the theatre, you have your your costume and your makeup and your wig to hide behind, and also you've gone on a story. You're just you're telling a story, and the audience can see you and they're with you. So if your voice cracks because of emotion, they they can see that emotion on your face and in your body, and so it's not. There's loads. Of, there's all your senses are alive almost. Um, you know, with the lights and everything. Whereas on a live performance on radio, people are only, it's just your ears, you're just listening. Mm-hmm. So you're not watching a woman sort of falling to the ground in pain or anything. It's, um, it, there's a real pressure on it. And also, when I perform every night in the theatre, that's not, well, it shouldn't be, recorded or anything. Whereas that, you know, that going out on radio, that's now documented. That's all over the internet. So um, there, there's right. that pressure as well. Yeah, I suppose I could I could feel that, yeah. Well, we'll go back to memory now. We're going to play the Elaine Page version in a few moments, but thanks to Three Counties Radio, we've also got that live version that you recorded, so we're going to use a little bit of that, and then we'll go to the Elaine Page version. Oh, and... that's scary, having them played back-to-back. <laughs> <laughs> compare and contrast. But, but yours is a live version, and it was just played with the keyboard. Uh, where Absolutely, is it? yes, it's completely acoustic, just me and the piano. Yeah, uh, whereas the Elaine Page version was recorded in a recording studio under, you know, controlled con- conditions. So. Yeah, with full orchestra, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, your voice carries it very well, I think, so uh, we'll oh, hear... Oh, thank you. 
So we'll play that little clip of that and then we'll move into the Elaine Page version. And Marianne Benedict, I'd like to say thank you very much for talking to us today. Oh, my absolute pleasure. I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. 